Okay, welcome to a new episode of Farm Like a Hero, folks. I'm Richard Perkins. Today I'm here with Matthew Livingston from Ento Farm in Oxfordshire in the UK. Matthew attended a farm scale PDC with us during his master's degree and then traveled to Costa Rica for a year whilst his family searched for a, a property in the UK. And upon his return, they had found a property. He designed the land plan and has been busy setting up a no big market garden and tunnel along with planting up a fruit and nut orchard. It's now in its second season, but the first real, first real year of production. So I think it's a great chance to reflect on the startup process, design process, building up customer base and implementing land plans. So Matthew, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. Absolutely. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome. And yeah, maybe we can go back to uh, the time that you were doing your thesis and you were formulating where you wanted to go. Tell us a bit how that journey went for you and how you ended up getting into farming in that way. Yeah, so winding back a bit further, I was uh, working in software in London for three years um, and sort of became dissatisfied with the general trajectory of that industry as a whole and the company I was working for. And so I decided it was time for a shift in direction um, and becoming more aware of sort of the issues we're facing in the world. And so I decided I needed to re-educate myself. And that's why I ended up doing a master's in environmental sustainability. And obviously that led me to, uh, well, I didn't want to focus just on issues. So I was trying to look for solutions at the same time. And that led me to first permaculture and then regenerative agriculture and of course you. Um, and so during my dissertation where I was sort of comparing uh, and contrasting permaculture and transition town and um, sustainability transitions, I may find an excuse to come to the PDC for 14, 10, 14 days. Um, and that blew my mind. Um, it was awesome. And so to see it as sort of um, an option for me and in, in something that's more aligned with direct action um, and a good life and living healthy. Um, mm. And so that's how I ended up there and how I decided to sort of try to give this a crack and make it a lifestyle. So what, what then led you to Costa Rica? Because obviously it's a very different climate zone, but you were working with natural building and like cropping over there a bit, no? Yeah, so Rancho Mostatal is a permaculture training center and they do a bit of everything, natural building, uh, fermentation, tropical agroforestry. There's a zone one, zone one gardens as well. So I was, I was co-lead co of the, the zone one air section. Um, and obviously total, totally different climactic zone, but I, I just thought that would be really good for me coming from, you know, digital background, no farming, no farming background, no real practical experience, um, just to, to sort of dive in and get a lot of practical skills, um, woodworking as well, which has been obviously super useful now, mm. just like learning how to use a drill driver, just basic, simple things that <laughs> if you didn't grow up building and doing those things, um, you don't have those skills. And so actually that despite it being in a completely different climate, it was ended up being really, really useful. That's um, awesome. Yeah. And did you, I guess there's a lot of group processes there and that's probably useful for like communication and workflows and processes like that, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's community living. Um, and so they base a lot of their decision-making on holacracy and social um, sociocracy. So um, group decision based making is, is, is really interesting to see all those processes. Um, and I haven't quite applied that on the family scale level yet, but <laughs> maybe, we, maybe when, if we scale up or have more people living on the farm in the future, that'd be good. Mm. Um, yeah, but learning how to do things in, in larger groups and um, yeah, it's useful practical experience. Yeah, that's great. I've got to ask you, did you meet our friend Benito when you were there? Yes, I did meet Benito. Benito's a badass. <laughs> yeah, I, met I didn't him. know. I didn't know you knew him. Well, I met him in Thailand a, over a decade ago, and he's an exceptionally talented plasterer, and taught me a lot about plastering. And oh yeah, not just not just plastering, but uh, just working with his hands. The whole Steen family. Um, yeah. We met his brother also as well, Bear. Bear also Steen. I think his full name is. They're an awesome um, family. Yeah, for listeners, the Steens were kind of responsible for bringing straw bale building to the States and their son was kind of raised 
unable to read or write coherently but could plaster like nobody I've ever seen. So amazing yeah. people. And he's got a great YouTube channel too, hasn't he? With I'm a follower, friends. yeah. He does some really, really great uh, videography. I think his brother helps film him. Mm. Um, while I was there, we actually had a team out from Japan, um, Kyle Holtzhurter. He has a permaculture center called Permaculture Center Kamimomi in Japan. They do some amazing work. Um, and he's also a natural builder. So we had a Japanese natural plasters course, uh, mm. which is incredible, as well as a, a Japanese food and fermentation course, which is awesome. super inspiring as I'm also obviously a fan of Japanese culture. Um, yeah, some of the yeah. master plasters from Japan. And I believe that's who trained the Steens as well with their plastering. But hey, that sounds awesome. I want to know yeah. then, because you're in an unusual circumstance, perhaps you're, you've bought land and a farm as as a family, right? But that means with yeah. your parents and siblings, is that right? Well, so that my parents own the farm um, and it is a, we, we all live here now, but usually it's just me and my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously everyone's home for the current situation. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's in South Oxfordshire. We're in our context is that we, st my dad still needed access to London and my, my younger brother is still in boarding school 45 minutes away. Um, yet we're still half an hour to Oxford. So we, we're still good proximity to cities and to markets, um, but we're like pretty much as remote as you could be probably in this part of the country. Yeah. Um, we're in a small, <laughs> tiny village down a long stone track and then a dirt track. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice. It's a really nice spot. It's hard to get remote in the UK, but that's it's hard to get yeah. remote. Uh, sorry, and uh, it's it's hard to find what what we ended up finding, which is you know a small family house with twenty acres. Um, there's really not a lot available. We searched for about five years for something like this, as opposed to a house with a you know three four acre garden. Yeah. That's awesome. So how did that all come about? Did your do your folks have any interest in the land and farming? So not as much as I do, but um, we've always wanted to live more remotely. And my mom is super into design and gardening um, and growing. Um, so they were sort of, as I sort of moved away from technology towards thinking about this being my career and, and, and life path, um, I sort of brought them along on that vision. Um, and we made a decision as a family to to go this route as opposed to you know buying something in the city or in central oxford or mm. or something with less land um so we were That's all awesome. kind of on board with it yeah well you said you lived in south africa before is that have your family moved around together yeah we're originally south african so my parents are both born and bred in, in durban mm -hmm. um and they left when they're about 18 to come to the uk to get away from uh, what was going on there at the time. Um, and then we actually ended up in the States for a while where I was born and then back to the UK and then to Singapore and then back to the UK. So we've been all <laughs> over. <laughs> it's been a bit mental, but so now, now we're finally feeling... put down roots and yeah. being a lot more stable and we're, we're here for, for good for a long time. 